I've literally been dreaming in Spanish after watching, se like we've binge watched seasons of Narcos and I just have some dude in my dream always like uh, just telling me to calm down. <laughs> and then skydive. In Spanish. Yeah. And then I skydive and then, yeah, <laughs> that's literally my dreams lately. You mind if I start this one? Oh, go for it, man. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Pop Culture Field Manual Podcast, sitting right at the intersection of weapons, the action, the militaries, and the pop cultures, the multiple All pop cultures. Plural. Yeah, there are many cultures around the world. We don't want to discriminate, do we? You no, know? not at all. No. We're not like that. Folks, uh, it's good to be back with you, team. Uh, thanks for listening in. We release a new episode uh, every Wednesday, and we also have the Pop Culture Field Manual Podcast on YouTube as well. If you yes, want we to do. See visual versions of the podcast with extra stuff that you don't get in the audio versions which you can find on spotify apple music or wherever you tune into podcasts hello 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 uh yeah folks uh those episodes usually come out the friday following the episode that comes out uh send us uh make sure to subscribe on the channel send us some love and an email pcfmpodcast at gmail.com if you want to hang out with me you can go to twitch.tv slash my happy self I forgot to mention also that we're on Instagram, but it's PCFM Podcast on Instagram. Yes, I like to go. I like how I go down and then I yeah, come back up. And if you want to hang out with Cameroon, yeah, if you guys want to hang out with myself, check me out on Instagram at Cameron C Fath, or go hit up my streetwear brand Kit God Apparel. That's K I T G O D Apparel on our website or on Instagram. And also, this podcast is brought to you by. Absolutely no one. We are no. in the market. We're in the hunt, folks. We are in the hunt for a sponsor. So if you are interested in sponsoring this podcast, be sure to send us an email to popculturefieldmanualpodcast at gmail.com. That's right. This is the greatest podcast in the world. No stupid deals. Guys. No stupid Come deals. Come on. No. We're not We're not a bunch of yahoos out here. Not just a bunch no. of country bumpkins, all right? Mm -mm. I mean, we are country bumpkins. We are high class. We live but in an American country, which means we like capitalism. We love capitalism. <laughs> Speaking of capitalism, if you want to donate That's right. to Very this important. podcast, make sure you guys check us out on Buy Me a Coffee. All of your donations are going right back into the podcast to make it even better yep. than it was last week. And we want to say a special thank you to all of the folks that have donated yes. so far. Thank you very much. Folks. It's greatly appreciated. Yeah. And you guys are making this super fun to make. And you're making the podcast experience even better for yourself. Yeah. You're so, paying for Amy's cough medicine. Yes. <laughs> She's sick. But... Anyways, enough of the plugs. I'm sure Sorry. you're tired of it. You're driving and you just want to get to you the... Get there to it the, is. Yep. You didn't get to the nitty gritty, man. Let's get to the nitty gritty. Israel, tell us what we're talking about today. Today, folks, uh, we're talking about prisoners of war. We're taking a deep dive into deep the POW dive. experience, if you will. It's got to rank among the top... At least the top three of things that you never want to have happen to you. Absolutely. You're kind of war. a serious topic in like a way, like terrible totally. experience. Oh totally. my gosh, terrible experience. Yeah, no, yeah. it's so many, and that's why we're talking about it a little bit today because there have been so many stories that have been told. Oh, it's yeah. Just the completely inhumane treatment, the horrific treatment. Yeah. And years, years and years of man. it. I could not imagine, man. It's like this type of subject is how many POW comedies have you seen? The, the, we talk about one or two, but not oh, really? many. There's not Hogan's many. Heroes and Stalag 17. Of course. Those were like comedic takes on the whole uh, okay. POW situation. But like, I guess you can make fun of anything nowadays. Well, that's huh? the thing is there's different levels of, yeah. of captivity. Like there's in SEER school, this is one thing I can relate. In SEER school, which is the survival, evasion, resistance, and escape. It's the survival school that you take uh, in the special operations or the, the Green Beret Q course. Yeah, don't rub it in. But many, what, what? I said, yeah, don't rub it in. Yeah, I'm just saying. I you know, didn't it was really cool. No, it was one of a kind of experience. No big deal. Rangers get to go. Uh, do they? Yeah, it's just not in the pipeline. Okay. Like we can we can put it in. For you gotta it. request it. Yeah, okay. it's, it's 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 a regular school, but you're it's kind of like airborne. So you know, it's like built into the in mix your, for it's me. It's in your pipeline. Okay. Yeah. So All just right. like airborne's in our pipeline, like yeah. Sierra is in your pipeline, but it's we can still attend just later on after oh, we okay. get to regiment. And multiple branches have either their own Sierra school or yes. they, they a lot of different jobs. Like, you know, PJs, rescue pilots have to go through Yeah, it, you AFSOC. Know? Yeah, exactly. Most of the guys in AFSOC. And then, yeah, all the dudes in aviation, whether you're like, uh, yeah, if you're any aviation job in the Army, you have to go to SEER. Yeah, in fact, they even have in the Air Force, we talked about it on a previous episode of like spec, spec ops jobs. Spec they have an job. entire SEER. They have an entire school if you want to be a SEER instructor in the yeah. Air Force, which That's I thought cool. was really interesting. Very cool. But, uh, yeah, as I burp out my lunch, I... So yeah, man, it's a it's a crazy time, and and one thing in Sierra School that they talk about, 
uh, is the conventional and the unconventional situation. Like mm. conventional would be like much of what we're talking about today, like World War II. Yeah. There's like Geneva Conventions. There's mm-hmm. like rules that the that the opposition is supposed to follow when yeah. like handling their prisoners, which I'm of course, I'm, of course they never do. But yeah. Um, and but yeah, it's unconventional when like you're captured in the Amazon by some narco's. And yeah. Like... Or like <laughs> Afghanistan or Iraq. Like you yeah. know, you and I have probably by non-military seen, forces. Like straight yeah, they up find bad you, people. You're just out on the out, and they just find you. Don't know what's going to happen. They, yeah. they don't follow any rules. Just some what bad do dudes. Yeah, just some doing some bad some, things. Yeah, Islamic terrorists or whatever. Like yeah. you don't know what they could make a video with you. You know, mm. uh, which you don't want to have happen. But anyway, so yeah, no. a lot of different situations uh, for the POW. It's it's this kind of yeah. It's this kind of interesting, interesting phenomenon. One thing I noticed though is with all of the suggestions that we have on the episode today, uh, they're all kind of centered around World War II and Vietnam. Like, yeah, it, it, I'm having a hard time thinking about like modern day I know there was a situation now, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm not going to be Ooh. very particular, but there was a, a pile, a bunch of like a crew in, for North Korea, like that flew kind of in North Korean territory and they got taken down. I American no crew. Idea. I had no idea. Uh, yeah. And they, and like they released pictures of them and like, you know, and they eventually kind of did like an exchange and stuff, but that would have been, I guess we're not technically at war with North Korea, even though we totally are, we're just not saying that we are, you know? Uh, but uh, yeah, interesting kind of like that. All of our all of our stuff today, or most of our stuff today, comes from those two eras, World War II, and um, and Vietnam. Because I guess maybe those are the ones that. Why do you think that is? You think they've just been popularized? I those, think it's it a lot might of stories be. came out of there. Or? Yeah, there's a lot of. Uh, I mean. There's a lot of stories that came out of World War II that we know. I mean, in in specific battlefields that we're operating in, I, I would think a POW would be kind of a an OPSEC thing. Um, I mean, modern day rescues, uh, you can think of like the Jessica Lynch rescue. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that yeah. First Ranger Battalion Lynch, did. Yeah. Um, in was it? Yeah, it was. She was a POW who's rescued from Iraqi hospital. If you want to read about that, literally just Google Jessica Lynch uh, rescue. Um, and that was what? In Iraq in 2003. Yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, yes, but I mean, you have modern day stuff like that. But that Iraq was even an old school, you know, because we went to Iraq to Afghanistan. Um, but I think it's just more popular because there's more stories that come out. I'm sure there's a lot of POW stories that happened in, you know, the GWAT. Yeah. But maybe- I haven't came out like fully right. yet. maybe we'll hear about them as maybe. they come out i know they use kind of it's not exactly the subject of the show but the first second i think in third season or the first season very much so of mm. uh um uh oh. claire danes um what's his name the guy comes back from afghanistan then he's like a muslim and you don't know if he's a terrorist or not what um what are you talking uh, about uh it's it's a showtime show you guys are homeland? yelling at your radios homeland really homeland. yeah homeland okay. that's the conceit of the pilot is that uh, she gets information that an American service member has been turned, Ooh. basically. And he just gets released in a prisoner exchange or whatever after being, like, gone for, like, eight years. So he comes back and, like, his wife is remarried Ooh. to, like, his best friend and they mm. have kids together. And so there's all this trauma. But then you, you find out it reveals kind of as the, the first season, at least. I haven't watched it all. But as it comes out, like, he, he's definitely a Muslim. Then you think, oh, my gosh, he's got to be a terrorist. But then he, like, has an explanation for, like – why he did that like he was compassionate towards me like his captor like he mm. that was how he found peace and stuff Interesting. and then he does something else that's suspicious you're like he's totally a terrorist and yeah. then she's like no no there's a reason for that and you oh. know and so it kind of goes and i think he now his, he's just a terrorist yeah his character is his character arc or him going back and forth with claire danes who's like a cia mm-hmm. agent that's like the first i think three seasons three mm-hmm. or four seasons and then, and then he dies and something else happens and so mm, you can't keep, you can't keep threading that out yeah you know? do you know any pw's Man, no, no. I remember after Seer School, and mm. when we do like a, was it like a day or two of debriefing, yeah. they had some Korean POWs. Oh, really? That came and spoke to us about their experiences and stuff like that. And that's interesting. Yeah, I, I, I had no idea that they did that. Yeah, it was it was kind of like a little like a treat, you know? Like you, I guess it's true. Hey, yeah. talk to some real POWs, POWs, not this like week long thing that you did where we're yeah. all pretending, even though it sucked. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't suck as, as much as actually being captured by yeah. the force. You know, I knew one POW. He was a really? he was a. I guess he was uh, when I was deployed. He he was kind of the the guy that you just gave a radio to. Just he was he was an American. Was he was, he was oh you he, talked about this. Guy have before. I have yeah, I because you said that he got captured. Yeah, he got he captured by ISIS same. and he got captured by Al Assad. Like oh. he got captured like three oh. times and oh, like oh my god. And they must have beat him like you know special Absolutely, like yeah. beat meant beat like him to a pulp because yeah. I mean he was you know 
he was a funny guy, but yeah. like he, not something because he was somebody you would not on purpose. On. Though. Oh, okay. yeah, not no. I'm pretty sure the radio they gave him. Okay. Yeah, he was a quote unquote funny guy. Yeah, um, scare but, quotes for all you listeners. Out there. Yeah, but uh, yeah, no, he got captured so many times apparently, and like he was a small. He must have been like five two. Like hundred small pounds, dude. small guy, and he was yeah, it was sad, but he was funny. He actually we know what they do to them over the middle. Oh East, yeah, 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 yeah. He was Ugh. you know I'm pretty sure the radio they let him like carry was just broken, just not. Yeah, it just oh, didn't work, man. so we just yell at nobody over yeah, it. He's on a wavelength all his own. At oh that yeah. Point. So I mean that's yeah that's kind of what crazy. would you do, Cameron? Like in like, a POW yeah. situation. Let me ask I don't you this: What era? They ask you like what era would you like to have fought in? What era would you? <sighs> like to and least like to have been captured in like, i don't know man I would, everything's want, terrible i would not want it because no because it's not a conventional force no i've and and in seer school they showed us videos of of like just like american dudes contractor dudes like heads getting cut off yeah like that's terrible away just because they wanted to yeah you know? there's no like, rules they're, they're like, not following you, the rules yeah you got to be so careful in those opening moments when you're when you, if you're in a, a situation where you get captured to like try to prolong your own life and get yeah. them to capture you instead of just blow you away. Yeah, it's, it's very serious. Yeah, we're going like dark. Uh, yeah, it's little. dark, dark, dark. No, dark. I mean thinking about it, because yeah, I definitely not want to be GWAP. Because I mean I've seen enough movies to where they like get them addicted to opioids and oh, like really? inject them with heroin oh, and stuff on purpose, like on against purpose. their will. Yeah, like there was this one movie I forgot what it's called, but this like POW. They're like Marine sniper team and they get captured and like they just uh, like they start injecting them with heroin and like get them addicted oh, to heroin. Oh and gosh. I'm pretty sure like they get like aids from it because of the needles oh, they're using and like horrible. his partner dies and like he comes home and he ends up being homeless and he's like got massive ptsd and he's oh addicted to heroin like, oh if gosh. you know what movie i'm talking about i watched it a recent one uh yeah i think it's like a b film like straight to dvd oh, straight okay. to like netflix type of thing yeah dude it's wow. a really sad sad that's heavy one. Duty, it's super sad uh but it's anyway. like a that's like a military version of like uh, uh what was that drug movie that's like really super depressing uh uh, with Jared Leto and he gets his arms amputated at the end of the what? movie. Yeah, it's like this really, it's like uh, Requiem for a Dream. Requiem for a Dream. Jennifer, Jennifer, what's her name is in it? And, oh, so sad. It's just the... Jennifer Connelly? Jennifer Connelly. There you go, Amy. Jennifer. Thanks, yeah. Um, magic voice, Amy. Magic voice, Amy. <laughs> now, we not have magic more. voice, Chris. Chris is, uh, Chris is not going to be here today. He's... Uh, had something uh, out there in the land of Texas, but uh, yeah. we'll get him on the next one. So. We'll get him. I mean, they do have a mic, so I should probably use it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Mm. People like it. People were, we got some comments like, oh, that lady's great. You should let her talk and give her her own podcast. I'm like, what? No, shut up. Yeah, take it easy. <laughs> She's not allowed to speak. So, yes, Requiem for a Dream and Jennifer Conley. That okay. being said, let's talk about our list. <laughs> yeah, we got a list here. Half and an hour gonna... later. This is what happens when Chris goes away is we go off the rails. Yeah, he can't keep us on <laughs> tropic, which, that which is perfectly okay. No, it's fine. I, I I mean I feel like if you're listening if you're if you're listening and you haven't turned it off yet, or if you've been listening for any amount of time, it's like we're all hanging out. You kinda like what we do here. You I know, guess. Yeah, just, you're just part of the crew. We're just like, you know, sit on the couch. Yeah. yeah just, hey man, take a load off. Yeah. Don't go into work just yet. Give me a couple more minutes on your on your radio, in your car, in your podcast before you jump in, go to work. Yeah. Or you're if you're at work. Thank you for doing your job. Please stay focused on that machinery, okay? Don't let anybody else get hurt today, okay? Yeah, it's really funny. Did you read that email by uh, that one dude? Uh, I forgot. I'm sorry. I forgot your name. But I know he, a lot of people he's listen like, you while know, they're at work. He's you know? like, every time you say you mention you're in your car, I start laughing because I'm not in my car, but I'm a mechanic and, and I'm, I'm working under on the a car. car. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We got <laughs> so you mechanics. Shout out to you, yeah. sir. In and around all sorts of vehicles. This um, podcast is strictly... Auto. <laughs> now let's talk about actually. Let's talk about the f the one that you have seen because I've seen most of these and I actually. Why don't we talk? A about lot of the these one? are old school. Yeah, old a lot school. of these so, are like uh, nineteen. You know, anywhere from fifties to the nineties. Okay. But there's a couple ones that I just want to knock out real quick. Yeah, do it, do it. Because I'm millennial and I haven't seen a lot of these. So we'll we'll talk about Rescue Dawn with Rescue Dawn. Christian Bale Rescue first. Dawn. Great, and it's based on a true story of German American pilot. Uh, it was shot down and captured by villagers sympathetic to uh, Pathet Lao. Lao during American military campaign in Vietnam War. True story so, to Dieter Dangler. Yeah. No, I, I've seen this movie. It's, uh, it definitely gives you like unbroken vibes, but yep. because I'm in Pacific theater. Um, but one's during – this one's during uh, it's a Vietnam. Ver is it Vietnam? Vietnam? Yeah. yeah, this it's one's Werner during – It's Werner Herzog, too. So it's, <laughs> it's not a conventional movie experience. Yeah, yeah. no. it's He doesn't stick to the rules. Yeah. 
But uh, it's a gr- I think it's a really good POW movie. And like they only eat rice the entire time. Like yeah, they just a eat rice. Of rice. And you know Christian Bale. I know we were talking about this before we even started. <laughs> yeah. But this dude, my dude. god, he must be a vampire. Dedicated to his craft. Man. Absolutely. Like I mean, this dude has lost and gained weight. Like if it was a sport, he would be an Olympian. Yeah. Like. Uh, what the machinist he got down to like 90 pounds right and right. it was just skin and bone and then and then i don't know if he did it bef- just before or just after but batman and he had to gain all this a bunch muscle, of yeah all know, the afterwards. muscle back and then that in that's this movie what caused his little blow up back in the day oh you know, the his little pissy fit Terminator salvation yeah. maybe yeah, he just, he's like, just really angry up on yeah he's like all I, yeah he's angry he's like he's so angry hungry, you know? yeah but yeah, this one he starts sorry. out he starts out like decent size and then throughout the movie, he just loses a bunch of weight because he's, he's literally a POW for a long time. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't remember the exact amount of time he's stuck in that camp. I think but it was... Like, um, no, I'm thinking of Unbroken. That was two years. Uh, that's, a, that's a good question. What I like about this is when he gets captured, they do something with him that they did to us in Sears School, which is right in the very beginning when they're kind of... You do like a tr- prisoner exchange for us where we get transferred from an unconventional situation to a conventional situation, which is like mm. the kind of prisoner of war camp, you know, and yeah. they get in there and they tell you, you got to sign this thing and sign this thing really quick. And what you're not supposed to do is you're not supposed to sign anything. And in the movie, when he gets captured and they first bring him in there to like the office of the head dude, he's like, you will sign, you have to sign this thing. And he's like, and we will send you home. And he's like, no, I will not sign. I cannot sign. I will not sign. And he's like, are you sure? He's like, we're going to send you home right now. You just have to sign this thing. He's like, no, I'm not going to sign anything. It's Cause it's a like, lie. A, you know, you confess to like war crime, war crime so they can, Propaganda. kill you and stuff right yeah yeah for propaganda and all that kind of stuff yeah, so you yeah, never signed i signed it i was i didn't i was like oh god you I are felt like so bad weak with, i know i was a weak willed i did Six i did pretty slap. good in other parts but that was the part that i failed in, so i signed the thing yeah damn Cause, man cause i'm a follower not a leader come on i'm not an independent thinker i need to put people to tell me what to do yeah but i mean put yourself in the situation to where like you're super hungry like you're been, the soul's been beat out to you. i mean a, a lot of this movie is them just breaking these dudes yeah man. like them taking away their will to like you know be like want to go on and don't they isn't there a thing i, I can't remember the movie that clearly but there isn't one of the dudes don't they like start kind of turning on each other like the prisoners so i think and one dude like wants to like gain favor with the captors and so I, I don't I forget you like, you kind of like a Stockholm know. syndrome yeah kind of yeah thing. and because it's like dude captivity will do crazy things to you man it's why yeah, people I'm like sure. you know John McCain and other people like that that come back that still lead normal lives you know my hat's often because like dude it's just youth if you think you if you think evil doesn't exist if you think about man's inhumanity to man you're wrong like if yeah if you've got this kind of rosy rose colored view of the world uh it's not true, man. It's I, very some black. Evil people out there. Yeah, there's man. very Darkness. dark, gross people out and if there. If you can come back from that, yeah, then that's it's pretty amazing. I'm sure. Plus, it'll give you a new perspective. Yeah, man. And, new, I mean, hopefully, a new appreciation for life. Absolutely. But I mean, just kind of finishing up this one, uh, but which going. I think is with so, a thought that I think is kind of important. Um, but like, once you escape, then what? Right. That's what it, that's what one thing this movie like really highlights I think is cuz when they escape it's like well they don't know where they are. Yep. Like they don't know like if they're heading towards like in deeper into enemy lines or, yeah. or out of so enemy lines. So not only are you yeah. like now escaping captor which you just signed your death note but you also have to survive yep. the elements and survive the wilderness and yep. they're in Vietnam so like yeah, it's yeah, jungle. There's jungle and insects, there's animals, snakes, insects. And all kinda, everything yeah. can kill you. Dude. And like, it's just added. It's like, okay, well, I, I get why a lot of these dudes stay put because it's like, it's risk versus reward. Right. Um, I, but man. That's what I love about that part of the movie where he, they, the training that you do undergo that kind of training, like in SEER school and like pilots and stuff, they have that kind of training. Like when he gets, when he runs out and the helicopter picks him up. And they have like the bona fides and stuff. Like yeah. that's what Rescue Dawn is. That's the title of the movie. It's it's a call and response. They take they say something like, "What's your kind of code word to know that we know yeah. that it's really you and you're the guy we're looking for?" And his code word in the movie is Rescue Dawn. Oh, you know? really? Yeah. And so oh, the, and I don't you go, remember you that. Go, so if you're supposed to memorize it, like if you ever get captured and stuff. Yeah, you have a very specific set of words that like you ask for that are super random. Exactly. And like if you say them, they know that they something's know that wrong. That's you. Or for this mission set, I think they can rotate too during d- different theaters and different times. Did periods. they let you pick yours? 
No, ours were given to us. Really? They let us pick ours. Oh, really? Yeah. I I, yeah. It was. I'm not going to get into it because I don't remember. <laughs> I know exactly what mine was, yeah. too. Bonaf- but, uh, by the way, bona fides, for those that don't know, I, I don't know the exact uh, definition, but bona fides is like, uh, is like um, you know, to bona fide, you know, like to make, it's like the things that you tell each other, like to verify things. Yeah. Le- like what? It, bona fide Legit, sounds yeah. for it's gen- you know. genuine, real. Genuine bona fide. Yeah. Bona fide. Yeah. yeah. Bona fide. The bona fide. Oh, cool, man. Know. Moving on. Uh, uh, let's talk a little bit about this a little bit just because I was trying to think of this. I, I didn't know what the title of the movie was, but I remember it's one of those movies you watch like late at night. It's a black and white movie. It's the 1953 movie Stalag 17. Uh-huh. And Stalags, I think, were the names of the different POW camps. They had like the concentration camps uh, and then they had the POW camps. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, and these were like this is a bit more of a conventional situation because they would have like officers and stuff and they were supposed to like treat them a little bit better, yeah, you know, it was conventional, people, POW. conventional. Yeah. And this is a, uh, yeah. American war film tells the story right, of a group of old. American airmen confined with 40,000 prisoners in a world war two German prisoner of war camp. Uh, and their compound holds 630 sergeants representing many different crew positions and stuff. So they like, there's a, like a, a, like a kind of a community that forms within the mm. uh you know within the pow camp and they have this one's a bit more of like has more of a comedic kind of take to it even yeah. though there is like serious stuff that happens the cool the wild thing in this one is they they believe that there's somebody who's like an informant like a like a spy oh for that someone's the feeding the germans because yeah, they have all these secret things that go on like they have they're planning escapes and all that yeah, kind of stuff meetings and, and then i think in the movie like one of them gets found out they're like how did they know about this nobody we didn't tell them yeah you know? who's the rat yeah uh, the cool thing is, is I think it's uh, William Holden, who's one of those classic actors. He's in there, and at one point in the movie, uh, he gets framed for something, and they think it's him, and they all do this thing where they like, beat him up at night. Yeah. And so he's all like beaten up, and then the Germans say, you know, soap who, party? who beat you? What's that? They have a soap party? They have a little soap party for him, yep. And he's all beat up, and the Germans are like, tell us who beat you, and we will we will take care of you. And he doesn't give anybody up. Uh-huh. And then at the very end, uh, they have this really important prisoner that they hide, like, in the water tower for, like, three days. You know, they're all looking for him around the camp, and they, they need to get him out because he's got valuable information. And William Holden kind of, like, blackmails them all and says, I'm going to be the guy. And all I can screw all of you guys. If I ever meet any of you guys in public, let's just pretend we don't know each other. Yeah. You know? And so he's the one that gets the guy out, and they eventually find out who the informant is, and they do this cool thing like while William Holden and the the pilot are getting away, they throw the dude out, but they tie like um, all these cans to like a string on his leg, so like he's making all this noise and it's like clanking around, and he's like yelling in German, but they're like shooting at him. He's like, no, no, it's me, I'm your guy. You know? I'm the and they informant. Shoot him, they, they kill him. They, yeah, they kill well, him. Well, this sounds cool, man. You know, honestly, I'm not a big novelty movie fan. You're not a big old. You're not like no, black and white movies. Man. I don't like black and white oh, movies. I don't damn. know. You're this just is, an uncultured swine. I am an uncultured swine, dude. I don't know. <laughs> it's just. They're just boring to me. Dude, there's some good movies out there, man. I got to check them just, out. Here's the thing. I kind of felt the same way a little bit. You just got to get me to sit down and watch it. Like, Yeah. You know, like I got to watch White Christmas. You know what I mean? Like, I got to watch these older movies, you know? Yeah. And I know. I know Amy's going crazy over there. Classic movies. It's all those, you, the movie snobs that I need know. to watch them. Oh, man. It, man it's I, just, you get a lot of, like, classic movie ideas that, like, we've overused at this point. But that's where they came from. Like, this yeah, movie started that idea. That movie started that idea. So, yeah. Mm, what else got you got you. for me, man? Um, well, I know we've talked about this one before. Actually, is it... Mm. I, got, I, I got my next favorite one. I love this one. You talk about some classic movies. It's in yeah. color, so you might like it. It's in color, so you might like it. Wait. Oh, my God. I'm... Uh, uh, I for some reason I read Empire of the Sun here, and you want to talk about that one because yeah, that's another dude. Christian Bale. Yeah. And for some reason, the uh, movie uh tears of is it tears of the sun oh tears of the sun with bruce willis with bruce willis popped in my head and i was like tears is that of a the P-O-W? empire of the sun <laughs> yeah and that one popped in my head it was like was that a pow no that's a rescue mission yeah that's yeah. like a rescue yeah okay so i was like huh what, ever, tell me about empire of the sun let me empire look it up of the real sun quick. Is great. it's a classic it's a 1980s movie it's uh, directed by steven spielberg it's actually written by tom stoppard and for my theater fans he wrote like um uh Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. He also wrote uh, Shakespeare in Love, which won Best Picture, you know, a couple years later. But great, great author, great writer. But 
um, a young Christian Bale. He's like, I don't know, he's like 13, 14 years old. I don't think I'm know? looking at the right thing. Uh, oh, there's a band called Empire of the Sun, and they're uh, oh, yeah. very artsy-fartsy looking. Too, and I was like, this... totally artsy-fartsy. Yeah, Empire of the Sun, the band. They've got some good... Uh, They've got some good. good Here stuff, we are. You know? <laughs> okay, now I'm on the right page. <laughs> I was like, "There's no way this 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 is this movie." That's There's one no of way. those really dark, really depressing movies because basically he's like a like a privileged kid living in in China right up to the lead up of World War II, and oh. when Japan invades China, he gets separated from his parents, and that mm. it's just about his experience, like going through and trying to survive, and like the cool people that he meets and the yeah. like, underhanded shady people that he meets. You know, interesting uh, and. Um, you know, spoilers, he eventually gets reunited with his family at the end. But it's just like a really, like, he befriends this young Japanese pilot when he's in this, like, POW camp. I think I'm looking and... at a picture of it right now. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, of that exact description. He's, oh. like, sitting next to this Chinese kid on a plane. Yeah, yeah, that's the Japanese pilot. And obviously Japan is, like, the aggressor in this movie. But And then at the very end, you know, he's he when he gets out and they, they, they meet up one more time, but then somebody sees him and they think that the Japanese kid is attacking him. And so they shoot the Japanese kid oh. and he died. And Christian Bale's like so mad at him. He's like, he was my friend. And it's he just this really, friend. it's a really sad movie, but it's really good. It's kind of like trying for the human spirit kind of stuff, which I guess is in line with pretty much everything we're talking about today. Yeah. POW, the, the POW story is like the triumph of the human or not triumph of the human spirit. Or yeah, it's one or the other. Is you try to escape or you just accept your fate? Yeah. Or you just Damn, go crazy rhymed. and you turn on everybody. Yeah. All right, next, man, uh, we can talk about, this is a classic one. This is a classic A lot of people are familiar with the 1963 movie with Steve McQueen, The Great Escape. Uh, yeah. Based on a true story, actually. It's based on Paul Brickhill's 1950 nonfiction book of the same name, first down account of a mass escape by the British Commonwealth prisoners of war from German POW camp Stalag Luft III. Stalag Stalag Luft Luft III in my research, gets mentioned a lot. They must have a really... Really, was this a big, big POW camp? Big POW camp, and apparently... Apparently, it was like super easy to escape from. No, not super easy, but <laughs> um, but yeah. Anyway, it's uh the the Nazi German occupied or Nazi German province of Lower Silesia for those history buffs out there. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, when when you mention the Great Escape, it's this is one of those movies that like is the first one to come up in your head when you think like POW, POW. camp yeah. movies. Like <laughs> yep. this is like the staple of all the movies, and it's one of the it's one of the the classic military movies that was ever made. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure we've talked about this before. And everybody, yeah, and everybody was in it. Well, what in what context did we talk about? Hmm, good question. I'm did not we sure. Ever do an I feel like we've talked about this before. Survival. I know we're gonna we got a survival episode out we there. We do. We do have one coming uh, up. But, it's hot um, to shoot. Yeah. But uh, those, I guess, some of these movies could kind of ride the line between survival and POW because once you escape, you gotta survive. Yes. Survive. Survive. But uh, yeah, it's it's great. They got it's, uh, you know Steve McQueen's like a hotshot pilot. They got all these. Everybody's in this movie too. It's a, it's got a like an all star cast. You know Donald Pleasance is in it, and uh, that's, who? That's about it. No, um, because Charles like, Bronson. Charles in it. Bronson. Yeah, Charles Bronson's in it. It's funny. It's cool seeing like these. These actors, when they're young, before they get known for whatever they're known for, mm-hmm. uh, it's like, oh, that's Charles Bronson, like Death Wish. That was like his big thing was the Death Wish movies. Mm-hmm. But um, uh, they got three tunnels they're building at the same time, Tom, Dick, and Harry, and there's close calls. They almost get discovered. And then I think eventually like 76 of them, I think it was, eventually got broke out and only three of them made it home. <laughs> Oh like my almost God. all of them were either captured and sent back or just rounded up and shot. Jesus, like I never knew that. I thought yeah. they all made it out. No, Steve McQueen, uh, Steve McQueen's character, the the one of the like you know top scenes in the movies when he gets on this motorcycle and he's on like the border with like Sweden or Switzerland, I think. Yeah. Uh, and he's jumping, he's jumping over the hills, over the fences, and he jumps over one, he jumps over two, and then he gets. His tire gets shot out from underneath him and he gets captured oh, man. again. You know what? This movie is also like the originator for a lot of escape movies as well. Like mm-hmm. as far as POW, like let's talk about a very serious POW movie. Chicken Run. Wait, what? Do you ever heard Oh of- Chicken Run? That is yeah. a POW movie. It mo- is a POW oh, man, why movie. Did we say- why did we mention that before? That's so good. Dude, man. Yeah. Did you ever go to Universal Studios when they had like the chicken run walkthrough? No. Where no. of like of like the sets and stuff like that? No, it's like it's you know, they have like a Van Helsing one right now and it yeah. like turned like it used to be chicken run. Oh, it used to be chicken run? Yes, yeah, so you walk through and like try to escape like from being made into a chicken pot pie. That's funny. But, yeah, uh, yeah, dude, they do like the tunnel system in chicken run too in the beginning where they're trying to get out and everything. And I'm like, 
<laughs> they literally took it all from Great Escape. It really is the Great Escape, it essentially. Is. Yeah, it is. Uh, what I love, I kid, I kid. Oh, Lord and Park. Oh, the uh, the. For those of you that uh, the little bit of trivia, those were the guys that were hired, I think, originally for the Solo movie, the Star Wars Solo, a Solo story. Oh yeah. And then they were fired because like like they t- wanted to do things like they wanted to be a little more goofy, have more improv, and and like nobody wanted to do that. Like yeah. or, and Kennedy, uh, Kathleen Kennedy, hate him, so they, she fired him and hired. Uh, <laughs> What's his butt? Get out of here! Yeah. No one wants Paul you. 13. You guys are going at your radios. I forget his name. Uh, good guy. Happy days. Never Happy mind. Day. Uh, but yeah, Chicken Run. Totally, totally based totally off of B-O-W the Great Escape. No, yeah, no, add that no, one to no, the list. But here, let's talk about what everybody wants to really talk about. Rambo First Blood Part 2. Heck, yeah, we want to talk about this. This is one of those, I feel like there was a period, we got one more that I want to talk about, Uncommon Valor, but yeah. uh, there was a period of like the, in the 70s and 80s, like after Vietnam, when it was very much on the collective consciousness of like, there's POWs, like there were POWs that never came home. Like there's Absolutely. a whole POW MIA organization is about until they all come home. Yeah. Because like there are guys that are still un- unaccounted for, you know? Absolutely. And so Rebel First Blood Part Two was very much in like, like when he he's like, you're going to, we're going to go in gonna contact when he rescue these dudes he's like Are, do we get to win this time sir we get to win that's this like time, that famous sir. line oh my god um written by james cameron uh. and i think is it john mctiernan who um who directed this one so, such a great classic 80s action movie like he really buffed out uh so much of someone's always kind of been on been into the lifting and the roids yeah. and the 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 supplements <laughs> and, and the stuff roids like. yeah you know i mean well he got and you get caught with like horse tranquil or like horse steroids or something. I don't know. I didn't know you could take that, but yeah, write he, that he writing take, that one down, I guess. George Picos models. Oh, who directed I think Tombstone, right? Is that Tombstone? Tombstone, the greatest western ever made. Yes. Uh, yeah, look at that bicep vein. Whoop bow. Yeah. Yeah. Good for you, Sylvester. Yeah. Oh, Leviathan too. Um yeah. yeah, man. What a great and, and just got so many classic like he's got the the lady, the Vietnamese lady who yeah. come, and she and he gets the little little green um the Jade Buddha necklace. necklace. That's very iconic. Yeah, this um, is the movie where he blows up that guy with the yeah, explosive with the arrow explosive tip. Explosive arrow, and it's so great because he's just standing there, yeah. and the guy can't seem to hit him, and he slowly draws. Leave, yeah, the thing, like, dude. slowly takes aim, and the guy's running, turns around, and then he shoots the arrow, and the guy blows up. Oh, oh my it's so god, good. it's good. They need, this is one of. The, I mean, I know how they remade the Rambo's. You know. Have you seen the remake of the Rambo where they're back in the jungle again and like Rambo is like a fish? Have you, the new one? Wait, oh, you're it came about, out like two, well, it's like the newer one. Yeah, it's called like John it's Rambo or something. It, like yeah, that. I mean, not the one that like came out. Re- there was one that came out recently, right? Where he's in Burma. Yeah, yeah, and he's, he's in on like the, the jungle. fifty cal. Yeah, that yeah. One, that one was brutal. That one's actually one kind was, of a, yeah, a that one was to form. You know? I know that one was brutal, yeah. man. And he has to rest. What he has to escort the missionaries. Yeah, there's like missionaries that get captured. They get yeah. that brutal, like you know, Burmese dude. Yeah, that's like captured. And he goes and he just starts slaying dudes. Yeah, that he one runs is away. Off. He sets the bomb up and See, he runs away from the bomb and it, it kills the. Or dudes. he like yeah, he gets on the fifty and he like turns on him and he just like blows. That's what it should look like when you're blasting dudes with the fifty. Yeah, just they body get parts in the body flying parts apart. flying. Yeah. I, yeah. That's the I like that movie because oh, yeah, that's I how I think. If you're gonna do an action movie like that, it has you to be in this hard. time. It's you got to go Rambo hard in the of, paint. Yeah, exactly. And and that's why I mean the last one, it, it was better than the last one. Yeah. That they Plus, did. I think Rambo's a little. I mean, Sylvester Stallone's older. Dude, he's got to be in his seventies. He must be in his seventies yeah. in this. Yeah. I mean, he's still doing what? What's that chain of movie? The Expendables. Oh, the, the Expendables. He's still yeah. doing that. They're coming out with another one, aren't they? I know. He must be. How old is Sylvester Stallone? Seven. I'm gonna. I'm, First of all, let's make the all game. Right, let's play a little game. Sylvester, let's I think he's seventy-seven. I think 77. he's seventy-seven. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say seventy-four. You think he's seventy-four? Yeah, okay. I'm gonna say seventy. I don't think he's that old. Sylvester Stallone, he is. Da, 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 da. Oh, it doesn't say. It's a, what? What's nineteen forty-six? Oh, Quickly, man. somebody out there with a calculator. Let's do, go do sixty. 20- so in forty nineteen forty-six. So sixty, which 20, would have meant two thousand six minus. 18. 19, he's 78. 18. Oh my gosh! He's 78 years old? What? Is my math wrong? Wait, 1976 or 19, 1946? 76. He's, 76. He's, oh, for, <laughs> you were right! Did you say 76? I said 77. Oh, you said 77. Well, you but were he's 78 years old. Oh, he's 78. I think. 20, well, I, I did my... Someone, you know I can't not, math do good. Listen, let's not quibble over the details. He's super old. He's very old. Uh, and he's still doing it. But he it. looks great. He looks great for his yeah. age. I want to know his secret. What's your secret? Uh, steroids. 
Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> favorite uh, favorite moments uh, apart in that film for me, there was the exploding guy with the exploding arrow trick. Uh, and then when he is in the POW camp and he finds out that he's been betrayed. He's 76. He's 76. Okay. okay. I said 77. Uh, and he grabs the microphone. He says, I'm coming to get you. And then he breaks out. He starts, you know, killing people uh-huh. and stuff like that. And he, he busts out of there. Um, also, the end when he he's the, it's a helicopter chase. Yeah, through the, the river system, the ravine system, and then he thinks he's got him. His his, his, his Sylvester Stallone's helicopter's down, and the guy's like creeping in, and then he comes up with the bazooka with the law, and he fires yeah, at him, blasts him. him up. So that's good, a that's man. yeah that's a classic. Uh, oh, and of course the iconic one arm nineteen M sixty. Yeah, we yeah. got the ammo belt exactly. wrapped around his arm. He's like, oh. Which honestly, you're if you wrap it around your arm, you're gonna induce a malfunction. Like <laughs> that's one of those novelty. Oh, there's a thing. You know what I watched the other day that I was like could be possibly a cool idea for this podcast is just debunking like Hollywood myths. Hollywood myths about. Yeah, I mean they have a like... show like that, but uh, what was the show? Oh, it's gonna bother me so bad because I, I watched it the other day and I was like, that is so false. Like oh, I was watching Narcos and you could definitely tell that these are airsoft guns because you could see like they did a shot from the ground up like yeah. a like a bottom up shot and you could see the winding wheel on the bottom of the magazine oh, no. and i was like that's an airsoft gun <laughs> oh that uh, sucks oh yeah no he shot a bazooka like literally inside of a building yeah like no people were behind, yeah there was whatsoever. zero backblast and yeah. i was like you would literally kill everybody yeah there. <laughs> yep. no backblast area cool. yeah but yeah you would totally if you wrapped a belt around your forearm yeah you would induce some malfunction because it's pulling on the ammo yeah right i now. can't tell you how many times like my my 240 bag would get like stuck on a round like the little piece of uh 550 cord that was wrapped around the zipper if it hung up on a round and it like started to tense out the belt yeah it would cause the gun to jam (laughs) so false false uh can i talk about this real quick i know you You can do anything you want it is my podcast but it's also your podcast Cameron. Mm. Uncommon Valor, 1983, is starring Gene Hackman, Patrick Swayze, Fred Ward, Randall Ooh. Tex Cobb, Swayze. Tim Thomerson, and Reb Brown. Um, this is the only good movie that Reb Brown ever did. But uh, <laughs> And those of you who know who Reb Brown is, he's the star of Space Mutiny, which is the subject of a what? very hilarious episode Red of History Brown. Science Theater 3000. Um, basically, I mean, it's such a great story. It's, it's again, in that vein of like, we, I wish we could go back and rescue our dudes, you know? Uh-huh. Um, but Gene Hackman is an officer in the Army, and his son, and I think it might have been Special Forces, but mm. it gets left behind on a mission. Okay. And his he goes around and he re-recruits all of his old teammates. And it's got to be... it's gotta be I got a job he has for a you. Guy Blaster, I'm which in. is Red Brown. Yeah, exactly. Um, and he retrains them. So they make a mock-up of the camp where his son is believed oh, to really? be held. And uh, and then they finally actually execute and they go to Vietnam and the it's like a tragic thing because they get a bunch of dudes out they rescue a bunch of dudes but his son was was the one the ones that died. This movie looks awesome. Stuff. It's super cool. This Randall, movie looks awesome. Randall you Cobb, son of a bitch. Yeah. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's super cool. Patrick Swayze is in it and it's a lot I have of the to check dudes, this one out. It's like you should. I think you'd appreciate it. It's not only is it a classic. 80s movie uh-huh. it's got that 80s action feel to it like yeah. an episode of a-team but it's it a looks really like a reproduction one. of a-team look i mean if you can plug in this video yeah or this picture that i'm looking at amy in youtube this would be <laughs> legendary they're all sitting in these like rice paddy f- with uh this dude's got uh looks like a bar slung over yeah, his shoulders yeah and everybody's just like got headbands on and face paint that's awesome yeah, man, oh, yeah definitely a, plug that in it's really it's it's cool it's almost like a redemptive thing because a lot of the dudes have reasons for wanting to go back, you know, like they feel like they failed and they want to redeem themselves and stuff. I just so. like war. Yeah. Or they just what like are you, some like... kind of war junkie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's so. why I have to check that one out. That one actually appeals to me the most after, out, out of all these ones that I'm going to check that one out. Nice, man. Might do it on my plane ride. I got a long plane ride coming in. You got something uh, else, man? I got one more. One you got one more? Go you. shoot it, man. One more. Uh, just because, uh, uh, you, did you ever watch The Outer Limits? There was an older Outer Limits show, maybe 60s, 70s or something like that, 50s, 60s. And then they restarted up. It was an anthology series in like the 90s. And there were some really classic 
episodes. Is this kind of like a is this kind of like a Twilight Zone? Sort yeah, of thing? it's like a sci-fi version of the Twilight Zone, with uh, basically emphasizing more sci-fi. Aliens oh, okay, and I was gonna say all that I kind of stuff. Twilight Zone was like sci-fi. Yeah, that Twilight Zone I think maybe started the whole genre, the and outer then this limits. is another anthology episode where every episode's different. There's one called The Quality of Mercy, and it stars. Um, Oh man, Robert Patrick from he was the T two T one thousand from Terminator two. Robert Patrick, um, he was also the super racist father of Peacemaker in the Peacemaker series. A super ultra white supremacist evil super villain. An Aryan brother. Yeah, villain. yeah, totally. He's called the White Dragon. It's oh crazy. Yeah. Have you watched that? Which you is kind of, if you call yourself the White Dragon, that's pretty Asian like centric. So like you kind of. Well, the, it's kind of ironic, know, but I mean, you know, it's it, with KKK. They got the dragon, the Grand Dragon is the, the name of like a big the wizard. Leader. It's your wizard, Grandmaster Wizard. Grand, oh, is it the wizard or dragon? It's the wizard. Gosh, you know, I'm really not up on my white supremacist KKK yeah, lore and mythology. Oh, yeah. brother, you better read uh, up. We there, just friend. lost our whole KKK white supremacist audience. Right? Oh man, <laughs> oh, my God. so disappointed. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> the Quality Mercy episode in 1995, uh, Robert Patrick plays a captured. Uh, pilot, but it's a space war. So they're uh, fighting against these uh, alien, you know, it's his alien space war and stuff like that. And he gets t- put in a cell with uh, another girl. I forget what her, what her character's name is, but, uh, um, oh, Brie Tristan is her character's name. But she was, uh, she played um, uh, Star Trek Deep Space Nine when, uh, uh, oh, the, the, the Trill, uh, what's her name? The uh, Trill! The Trill, yeah, yeah. Uh, DS9. It's, uh, you guys are all yelling at me. I know. I know. I'm sorry. Um, but uh, look her up real quick. She was really cool. She she played. She only played. Um, oh, Jedzia Dax. She was Ezri Dax, right? Uh, but uh, I don't see her right here. Anyway, not gonna bother with it. She's I feel like in you're there just thinking too. Out loud right I'm just now. thinking out loud. I'm this like is, just This is a basically a, pro, uh, a podcast about my thought process. Yeah. <laughs> So they're in this cell together, and what they do is they start experimenting on her, and they start, like, changing uh-huh. her, like, into, like, an alien and stuff. Uh-huh. And so, like, there's, like, a, a race against the clock kind of thing. And uh, he's trying to find a way out, and then one scene he, like, sees down, like, in a room where they're, like, changing her and, like, and they're, like, change Like, she looks kind of like an alien now. Uh-huh. And so at the very end, she's, like, they throw her in the cell, and she's almost... She looks almost completely like one of them, you know? She's like, there's no way we're going to get out of here. They're doing all these experiments to me. And she's like, don't worry. Don't worry. Listen, I have something to tell you. It's like, nobody knows about this, but we have a secret base on the far side of this moon. And there's going to be an all, there's going to be a, a counterattack on the aliens and we're going to win this war. And she's like, thank you for telling me. And he's like, what do you mean? And then she gets up and they open the cell. And she starts to leave. She's like, you don't understand. They haven't been changing me. They've been changing me back. And she was like a spy the whole time. Uh, and he's like, no. And he just gave up the entire fleet and like doomed his entire race and stuff like And that's where they're... Sort of POW. Yeah. Well, they're POWs in an alien war. And I I just kind of wanted to get there. You know, we can also talk about aliens for a little bit because there's a POW... No. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I was going to be like, hey, man, we got a fan question. To, <laughs> we got a game and a fan question to talk about. Uh, do, you, do you have a question there? I didn't. I don't see a question. I got a game there, though, if you want. Oh, you want... Yeah, let's just... Let's just yeah. jump into the game. I mean, we, uh, we answered all the questions. We did answer all Last the episode that's right okay let's no dive right questions. into the game <laughs> all right here's the game man it's called geneva suggestion ah yes. so we know that the geneva conventions are kind of rules for warfare rules of war yeah and they have rules for how you are supposed to treat uh you know uh pow's and mm. stuff like that uh and it's you read some of them and they're pretty uh they're pretty hilarious because you're like, oh, nobody follows these rules at yeah. all, ever. Hence so, Geneva Suggestions. Yeah, the Geneva Suggestions, we like to say. Um, war crimes and this and that. But I looked at a couple of them, and so I'm going to I'm gonna give you a couple of rules. And you tell mm. me whether this is an actual rule, like a real rule, or a fake rule. Ah, so okay. Up, okay. Very cool. So we got I the, am ready. We got the first one there. Number one is prisoners of war must at all times be humanely treated. Any unlawful act or omission by the detaining power causing death or serious, seriously endangering the health of a prisoner of war in its custody is prohibited and will be regarded as a serious breach of present convention. I'm pretty sure the first sentence in there is the actual line of the Geneva Convention regarding POW. <laughs> um, so I'm going to say that is real, but I don't know about the rest of it. Um, but I know for a fact the first line is correct. Okay. No, so I'm just going to go with that's real. That is a real convention. Okay, so just nice. copy and pasted that one. That's, I think, Article 13 real. Yeah, of that one. So Perfect. Yeah. 
Good okay. one. Good first one. So nice, second nice, one. Nice. Uh, this is just a portion of one. So okay. captors of prisoners of war are entitled in all circumstances to respect their customs and their rules. The captors of POWs are entitled in all circumstances to respect the customs and rules of their captors. Sorry, I didn't finish that. I didn't say that right. Wait, so captors of POWs are entitled in all circumstances to respect their customs and the rules. So, like, say, like, if I'm being uh, captured by, like, Muslims, I have to participate in prayer. Yeah, that okay. would be the, the gist of that rule. <sighs> nah, dude, that's not real. You don't think that's real? I don't think that's real. I, th- I Every POW movie I've ever watched, they don't have to do <laughs> shit for the people. <laughs> Well, they did their research because that is a fake one. Nice. I actually just changed the wording. It's uh, it's the POWs uh, are you know entitled to be respected and and you know yeah. their customs and their, their customs. religions are supposed to be respected. By yeah, the, by the, the captor, not yeah. the other way around. Not the first, yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> no, I, I knew that. Good one. Good one. You're uh, you're a two for two, man. Uh, number three, the power detaining prisoners, the power detaining prisoners of war shall be bound to provide free of charge. For their maintenance and for their medical attention required by the state of by the state of their health, so they have to require. They're required they have to, to give, give medical, medical attention. attention. Required to give yeah, medical. Yeah, detaining the prisoners of war shall be bound to provide free of charge for their maintenance and for their medical attention, as required by their state of their health. Hmm. I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, that's a that's a toughie. That is a toughie one. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say that's a real thing, but it's. Very minimally uh, enforced. Say it's real? Like, give them the minimum care. Okay. I'm going to say it's real, though. You're correct. It is no, a real okay. world, real word, and they and is almost, I, I don't know any situation. Yeah, I'm trying <laughs> to think. Like, I'm like, in provide, Germany. Whoever provide, bothered providing for their medical care. Yeah, and I'm thinking of, like, jail. Like it's a like ball of rice every six months. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I was like, that's why it's, like, minimum, just to keep them alive. It's yeah. technically not, like, to keep them healthy and, like, you know, fat. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And provide like medical attention. Like if I got an allergy or like yeah, I have some sort like, of, you know, like skin rash, like they're not going to treat that. Who, no. What do they care? They're like, that doesn't, that doesn't, it's life limit I said to them. Like if yeah. you're going to die, they're like, oops. Yeah. Oh, the, the, one less capital dog, dog yeah, to One less ball of rice to give. All right. Number four, real or fake, all prisoners of war shall be treated alike by the detaining power without any adverse distinction based on race nationality, religious belief, or political opinions, or any other distinction founded on a similar criteria. Can you repeat that? Just the beginning part of it? So they Uh, can't be... You can't basically treat someone differently based off how they... Their religion. It's it's kind of a lot of what you hear, like, you know, like hiring practices for jobs today. Yeah. It says, All prisoners of war shall be treated alike by the detaining power without any adverse distinction based on race, nationality, religious belief, or political opinions, or any other distinction founded... On a similar criteria. I'm going to say that one's fake. uh, Just because I know rank structure is still... you mean treating them differently Treat based, them on, like, if based off rank and officer enlisted? Oh, okay. right. So I think that one is fake. Okay. Because I definitely think there is going to be some uh, distinction distinction there. between them, regardless of it being a real. It's real. The Geneva Convention says you can't discriminate. Don't okay. dis- no discrimination. No okay, the, Gene- the Geneva said so. Geneva says no, so. but it's a real thing. Geneva not Convention, spo- the most inclusive. Yeah, the most inclusive, inclusive and diverse yeah, and diverse and equitable equitable organization equitable organization in warfare so yeah you didn't get that right but it's yeah it's a real rule which i'm sure nobody nobody follows in no. these rules. even the fake ones they don't follow yeah all right <laughs> yeah, yeah. you're doing pretty good you got one more number five. one more okay number four these real real or fake real or real real fake really fake uh women shall be treated with greater regard than men in regard to their sex and shall in all cases benefit by this treatment as favorable over and above such treatment granted to men that's worded very officially. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, is Israel able to? Was come I up able with... to write that officially? Yeah, was you able to write that officially? <laughs> I don't know. Women have. I'm going to say women have treated. to be treated differently. With they have greater to be treated regard, with greater man. regard yeah. in regards to their sex, and shall be in all cases benefit by this treatment as favorable oh, over benefit. and above such treatment granted to men. That's pretty official sounding. So I'm going to say that's real. That is totally fake. That's totally fake. The real wow, rule says smart. that they needed to be treated the same. And have no difference in regard to their sex. Okay, I would say so. They just be treated the same as men. 
Uh, and I'm sure that never wow. happens either. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure, sure they're certainly yeah. not treated better unless they like turn yes. traitor exactly. and like get. Then they start sleeping with the like the boss man. The boss whatever, man you know? just to get their way, just yeah, to get just a promotion. To, yeah, just get yeah. out of there. <laughs> Stockholm syndrome. So, well, damn, stuff, dude. Man. Yeah, that, you got me good on that one. Good for <laughs> I, you. You're way it, smarter than I thought. I tried. I worked really hard to try to word them officially. Yeah, because you can kind of tell the way that the official law and wording is yeah. like very specific. You know, that's funny, so. man. Cool, well, man. good, awesome. That was a fun one. Good job, man. And good. I hope I hope the listeners got a little bit of uh, education on uh, the rules of prisoners of war. So yeah, if you so ever are you know in possession of a prisoner of war, prisoner of war, make sure you follow these. Uh, treat them kindly. Don't discriminate. Them kindly. Don't discriminate. Don't treat those women one. any differently. All right. No, yeah, everyone's the same. <laughs> Everyone is the same. We are all the same underneath underneath our POW yeah. rags. We're all red inside, <laughs> folks. Uh, that's it, folks. Uh, that is for it. Us. Uh, new episode coming out next week, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Absolutely. Cue music.